drivers, start your engines! Green, green, green. When you first started racing, did you ever envision that you would have as much success or be as well known as you are today? No, there's no, uh, you know, at the time I started, I was 18 years old up in a little dirt track in Virginia. And, uh, you know, it was just something that I wanted to do and uh, had no idea where it was going. If you started racing today, say you were 18 again and you started racing again today, could you do it the same way? Know that the, the you know the world has changed, the society has changed, and you know this is all big business now. You got it's completely different. When when I started, you were you were the uh, the chief bottle washer, the whole the Indian chief, the whole thing. You know you did the majority of all your work with the help of your friends and whatever. But now you've got to have uh, uh, just a computer scientist, uh, shop engineers, spray engineers, engine, uh, everything is so um, categorized to now that it would uh, be almost impossible to do it the way I did it originally. In the, the mid to late 60s, you were a well-known mechanic. You, you crew chief just about any famous name back then, and then you became a, a household name yourself. <laughs> and, and have you semi-retired, or what have you done? Yeah, as a, as a driver, um, I just drive now occasionally just for a fun or you know, when uh, my regular driver can't make it or something, I don't mind filling in a little bit on the short track. Um, it's still in, in my blood. I still enjoy doing it. And, you know, be realistic about it. When you get my age, you don't, uh, you know, you've lost uh, some of your spark that you had. But, you know, I enjoy doing it. And uh, when I can go out and play a little bit, it's like, uh, you know, it's like a fisherman going fishing, you know. You just don't quit and never look, look at it again. I enjoy racing. I love racing. That's my life. Since I was 18 years old, I never had a public job. I wouldn't know how, to, how it would be to work for somebody. So um, I'm 
I guess you say semi-retired. I'm just doing it for the sport of it now. So you're, you're still in Inman, South Carolina now. Um, do people still call you for, for interviews, for consulting, for advice? Do, they, do, they, do you still get any inquiries like that? Well, I think right now, you know, not trying to, you know, blow my own horn or anything. I think I'm more popular right now than I was back when I was racing. Uh, I think a lot has to do with television showing some of these classic races like you're doing now on uh, like Speed Vision and some of them are showing the older races and uh, I still get fan mail as much or more so than I ever did. I got a, got a fan letter from uh, France uh, last week. and uh, So you're international? Well, they, they know races going on over there. Evidently, they wrote it in French. My son is a you know, college graduate with a degree in uh, French so he can read it, read it to me. And, uh, so, you know, it makes you feel good that even though I'm not active racing, you know, every day like I am, that people remember. And, you know, especially, you get, I've had uh, uh, cards and stuff come in from Australia. So, uh, it, it definitely has turned into a worldwide sport. When you started, did you see that coming? Did a lot of you see that coming? No, I don't think anybody did. Uh, if anybody in the sport did, it was Bill, Fan, Bill France Sr. He had the vision to do what he did. And, and it seemed like he had, before he died, he had enough vision to put things in place to uh, ensure NASCAR's success now. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, NASCAR and racing as a whole is where it's at on the cost simply of uh, Bill France Sr. And nobody, well, I say nobody else, it's of course there's other people and all, but I think he's a prime, prime uh, example of what a vision and carrying it through and putting things into place to make it work. You finished second in points, third in points. You were 19, uh, you were a rookie of the year in the 1960s. Um, you were still a, a front pack runner in the 70s. Where, can you pinpoint maybe where you started to, to run mid pack and then to where you're at today? Well, I think, yeah, uh, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, up through up to about the 80s, you know, I could still run with the pack. But what really put me out of business or put me behind was the, the money and preparation into the sport. As the sport got bigger and these multi-million dollar sponsors came in, uh, I wasn't in a, a position uh, being kind of like a one-man team my whole racing career. I didn't have a savvy to go out and hire me a, a staff of people to pursue sponsors and uh, do the promotional work. I knew how to work on race cars and drive them, but I didn't know how to promote. And I failed to promote myself, and, and I got left in the in the, uh, the whiplash. Your most memorable race, uh, where was it? Uh, what happened, and uh, what was the year? Uh, it sticks in my mind pretty well. It was uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, the first one, uh, well, it was back in, they called it Grand National, which is Cup now. Uh, I won the race over Richard Petty, and uh, yeah, Richard Petty had trouble in the race, but so did I, you know, it's about everybody, but uh, won the race, beat Richard Petty by 15 seconds, uh, set a new track record that still stands because they, the uh, track is not the same configuration now, so that record will last forever on that particular racetrack, and to beat the King, and you know, uh, I didn't beat him fender to fender, but I beat him by 15 seconds, the way you look at it. And uh, he, he was second, 15 seconds behind me, as I said, and uh, the uh, third place man was uh, seven laps back. So that shows you how him and I were running. And uh, I'm real proud of that. And, you know, it's probably the best moment of my life because every how you beat the king, you, I beat him fair and square. Do you remember what year that was? 1970 at Richmond, Virginia. Uh, how about your worst wreck? Uh, that was at Rockingham, North Carolina. That uh, I believe it was 69 or 68 or 69. Uh, that was one of the just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Running exceptionally well that day. Bobby Isaac was leading the race. I had started fifth and it was early in the race and I had come up and challenged him for the lead. Just drove underneath him and he blew the engine and back those were run uh he was running the chrysler and back those 
we had big like five gallon oil pans on instead of the, the dry sump system we have today. And that when the engine blew, blew on one of those, it just dumped five gallons of oil right on everything. And of course, I hit the oil, being at the lead in the front of the pack, I think every car there hit me. And uh, that was a real bad setback because it gave me a concussion, broke a collarbone, and uh, I was laid up for about, uh, I guess, about three months. Um, last question, um, why number 48? You seem to have been 48 ever since you started. Well, it is. Uh, I worked for Rex White. It was my first guy that I worked with. And 1960 NASCAR champion, right? That's right. And when I left Rex, that was always my favorite number. And, uh, of course, Rex wasn't racing when I started driving in 66. But uh, I tried to get four, and John Sears had it. Um, I'm in the South Carolina right next to me was uh, G.C. Spencer, who at the time had two car team, had 48 and 49, and uh, he said, I'm not going to run 48 anymore if you'd like to have it, so it had a four on it. It had an eight on it. First race car I ever drove had an eight, so it stuck, and I've, I've had it ever since. Let's say you wanted to put together a TV show about ARCA. What exactly would you get if you took the producers from Baywatch, then you put together Carol, Mike, and the six kids that formed the Brady Bunch, then we could throw in Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and the Disney Corporation. The younger generation may not remember this, but we can rebuild him. We have the technology in the $6 million man. Or how about... The American Broadcasting Corporation, or ABC to the layperson. Add all the pieces together and you get 1996's Daytona Beach. Tune in next week to find out more.